Hello, good morning, SH2 students. Welcome back again to physics lesson. And today we are going to continue our discussion about EOCQ 31. I know that this morning seems very comfortable for you, for us to sleep because it is raining still early in the morning. But let's get your spirit back to do these questions. We continue to do number seven. The initial activity, a sample of one mole of radon, 220, is 8.02 times 10 to the power of 21 per second. <clears throat> the question is the decay constant for this isotope and then the half-life of the isotope. So this is how to do. So we know that one mole contains an A or the Avogadro constant, uh, which is you can check on your textbook again if you, if you forget it. One mole contains an A atoms, and we also know that the activity is lambda times n. Then if we want to find lambda or the decay constant, then it will just simply by dividing activity over the a Avogadro constant, and then you will get lambda. For B, they ask you what is the half-life of this isotope. So the half-life, you just need to use the half-life formula. Half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over the lambda. The lambda is from here, the decay constant. Then you will get all the answer for number seven. Next, how to do number eight. For number eight, show uh, figure 31.14 shows the count rate recorded when a sample of the isotope indium 116 decays. Use the graph to find the half-life of the isotope and calculate the decay constant. So here, you need to find the half-life by reading the graph. You see the time, uh, and you see also the count rate in becquerels. Half-life, uh, the original one, the original number of the count rate is 160. So it means half of 160 is 18, right? So we see when the count rate from 160 become 80 is What is the time? Okay, so what is the time when the count rate falls from 160 to 80? Then you will get the half life only by reading the graph. And then after that, calculate the decay constant. After you find half life, then you can. Okay, oh wait, I'm sharing a new screen. After you find the half-life, yes, this one, then you can find lambda, okay? Because they ask you the decay constant. So lambda is equal to 0 0.693 over half-life. And for number nine, Next number, the proportions of different isotopes in rocks can be used to date the rocks. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.9 times 10 to the power of 9 years. A sample has 99.2% of the proportion of this isotope compared with a newly formed rock. So this 99 Point two percent is the percentage or the ratio between the original number of the radioactive 
materials, ya, yeah, original number with the number after it decays, or we can say it is n over n zero, ya, yeah, ninety nine point two percent is n over n zero. The question is calculate the decay constant for this isotope of uranium and calculate the age of the rock. For number nine, <clears throat> so because we know the decay constant, then we can find the half life easy by half life is equal to 0 0.693 over the lambda. Okay, the unit will be per year. And for B, because they ask you what is the age of the rock, it means we need to find T. <clears throat> Okay, now, if half-life, we directly use ln 2 here, logarithm, uh, logarithm natural 2, but because uh, here we do not use the number of the half-life, but they give us the proportion, which is 99.2%, so we just simply put to the original formula of half-life yeah so logarithm natural times n over n zero is equal to negative lambda times t so n over n zero as i mentioned to you is 0 0.992 so this one you can use your calculator to calculate it and then after that the lambda from here and find the time t okay And next, <clears throat> for number 10, the table shows the receive count rate when a sample of the isotope vanadium 52 decays. So you read this table and then you need to convert it into a graph. Draw a graph of the count rate against the time, comment on the scatter of the points. So the graph will looks like this one, a smooth curve. Yeah, remember a smooth curve. And if it is scattered, a bit scattered, then explain why it is scattered. Yeah. And from the graph, deduce the half-life of the isotope. Yes, you can deduce the half-life the same way like we deduce the half-life for this indium-116. And describe the changes to the graph that you would expect if you were given a larger sample of the isotope. So what will happen if the question here, yeah, they give us a larger sample of the isotope it means the count rate is way bigger than this what will happen to the graph so for today you need to do number seven eight nine and ten four numbers i'm going to wait until 4 p.m today and i will still receive questions from you if you not clear about this explanation yet yes you still can ask me via whatsapp and that's all for today i hope you do understand how to do the questions and i also hope that you do it by yourself okay that's all for today thank you and bye bye